Get it, get it done. As far as stuff in the shop, I've got machines outside, like the CNC that got demoted, and I'll give you a rundown on each of our machines as we go through here. Not um, initially, I was looking at doing this a little bit different, trying to find the history of the machine before I even had it, so we could do, which would be really cool. Too much time. Okay, but let's go through here. Let's start out with our Davis key seater. We were already running that the other day. Ah. Man lift is another one, but let's stay with machine tools. Davis Key Seeder. It was in a shop in a paper mill town where I grew up, and when I went to buy that, unfortunately, the man was having some health problems, so he was liquidating everything. How we set the price on that, he t I asked him what he wanted for it. He told me $250, and I said, yes, sir. So, that's the reason why I bought that machine. I didn't pick it because of the type of work I do. I didn't pick it. I just saw it had value. It came with cutters and it was $250. So that's the whole point of this as I go through these is deciding what machines you buy is not always about what is the best machine or uh, what is the best. If you have a job that has a certain amount of parts, then you buy what's, what makes the most sense for doing that job. Heat treat furnace. I knew I wanted a heat treat furnace. I paid roughly $980 for it. Somewhere back in the 90s, it sat outside for close to 20 years. Then I got a job in 2010 that needed some hardened parts, and I've used it intermittently since then. We actually made several thousand of those hardened parts and that was when we brought it inside, slowly dried it out. You know, you, you've got a uh, fire brick that's in there that's been drying, that's been wet for decades, just moisture in the air. Bring it up to temperature slow. If you bring it up quick, all of the water in there has a lot of steam pockets that'll form and you'll break all your bricks up. When you first heat them up, if they've been outside for a long time, or even in the shop, especially if you're in Florida, any of the places that's damp, uh, western Washington, even in the shop, you need to bring the temperature up really slow at for first. That, I would say it poured out about 15 gallons of water when I first uh, heated it up. I just brought it up to 180 and left it there for a day. Brought it up to 182, left it there for a day. I, I spent a week just slowly because it hadn't been outside for decades. And we put new controls on it, so it's got, they're not expensive, but we put new little programmable controls on it for the temperature, a new thermocouple, um, new low temperature thermocouple. The high temperature one is an expensive platinum thermocouple, and it was fine, and we left it there. I spent about 4000 on doing the upgrades on the furnace and bringing it online. It is back here in the hiding corner because it runs single phase. Now... That's the other side of it. Okay, I, I need to explain this as I go along. $250 in this machine here. I would estimate it's done about $10,000 chargeable work in the last 20 some years that I've had it. Almost close to yeah, 25, 25 years that I've had it. This one here, heat treating, um, total expenditure in it is under 5,000. Its portion of the jobs, if I was going to sub it out and do stuff, it probably has made me 200, 300,000 somewhere in there. So it's been a very good one to have had. Um, this lathe right here, this is a hollow spindle. We're hoping to get back on that and put it together. Um, we need to more so than some other projects I've got in mind. But it originally was a mistake to buy. But I bought the hollow spindle, and I paid 5500 for it, I think. It was supposed to come with two chucks, which it didn't, so I spent another $3,000 buying a second chuck for the headstock. We've put 4000 in the bearings to re-bearing it. Um, I also bought a second lathe for 2500 that had a, la a lathe bed that was in better condition which is what's on here. And so this is actually two lathes. 
the $2,500 lathe that I bought, we ended up using it for a while and even put it on risers and we did some locomotive wheels for the park locomotive and it probably, the $2,500 lathe probably paid me back 30000 in work uh, before we cannibalized it the rest of the way to put it in with the uh, hollow spindle yet. Um, yeah, we'll skip the man lift. We're just getting them as we go in order and run across them here, kind of go back and forth. This one I bought, uh, I bought this one new from MSC. Initially, this is the same basic model as that one, except they shut the factory down. I didn't realize that they had shut down the LG factory, and I talked to the people well, several people trying that had been dealers for LG trying to uh, find one of these and there weren't any around. I kind of think that my looking for these was what got them to bring some into the country. There might be more, but what I saw, and so this is kind of an orphan at this point, I think. Um, I talked to the people in China that uh, were supposed to be making these lathes and I forget I had to buy eight lathes to get them down to the price of like 32000 or something. It was pretty insane pricing that they wanted. Somewhere along the line, MSC decided that they were going to buy them, buy some. And they had eight different ones. Some of them had taper attachments. I didn't spring for the taper attachment because I have the taper attachment on the other one down there. I just wanted another solid 20-inch lathe. And like I say, I didn't realize that they had shut down the factory till after I got this one. I paid, I think it was 18 something, under 19,000. I kept watching MSC as I saw them come in until I got a good, good deal on it. And that was supposed to be with free shipping, but the free shipping didn't work because I was in Alaska, but they were nice enough to split the difference with me. A lot of companies won't help you at all and the shipping was about 3000 so I, I, I still, and I don't remember what, whether that's the 18-something figure I have in my mind. It might have been less than that initially, or whether I had 1500 on that for shipping. I don't know. It was somewhere in eighteen to 20000 that we paid for it anyway. And yeah, it's, it's been here for a few years and paid for itself multiple times over. Um, guessing how much work we've done on it at this point probably forty thousand dollars worth of work on it maybe sixty thousand not exactly sure um, this one here i bought this at auction uh Eliaska auction i paid eleven thousand for it at auction it is <clears throat> a pariba that's uh, Polish made. I've had good results with most of the Polish stuff I've had. It's got some really wacky wiring and it is a 200 volt lathe originally. <clears throat> so we just permanently mounted a 480 transformer up there. I didn't want to bring in a separate transformer and have it sitting over here humming all the time with the 200 distribution or a separate, a small enough transformer. I just hung it on there. I was going to, originally I looked at rewiring the motor and stuff, but this is not set up to be rewired. And it is a multi-speed with some really interesting contactors and it was just easier to leave it alone. Um, it has some broken castings and the chip pans are missing, but we're not using coolant on it anyway. It's just the... It's a nice medium-sized lathe. I'd like to have a real big one. We almost bought a big one, but the guy that was uh, dealing with it, it was, what is, uh, 56 inch by 30 foot. Had I bought it, I wouldn't have gotten this lathe and it would have made me no money. It would have been one of those machines that, oh, wow, um, there's been two times I could have used it in the last 20 years since I did not buy it. And of those two times, I don't think I'd have got the job, even if I had the machine. So, and it would have been just obnoxious to do the stuff that we normally do on this machine. This is a 32-inch swing by 10 
10, it says nominally 10 foot between centers, but it's actually, if you hang the tailstock over a little bit, you can get 11 foot out of it. So, <clears throat> and came with multiple steady rests. Uh, again, to take a guess on what has this $11,000 done for me as far as the amount of work. That's a hard one to say on this one. I don't know. I'd say somewhere around 100000 but I, I don't know. We don't use it much. We don't use it much. Um, this one I bought new. It was 11500 I should have bought four of them. <laughs> Didn't have any more money than the 11500 at the time. It came, that was with the taper attachment. It was originally supposed to come with free shipping to Alaska, but then they reneged on that. This was from Inco before MSC bought them out. And in fact, it says Inco. It's an LG, but it says Inco somewhere on it. Eh, maybe on the plaques we pulled off now. Anyway, it's an Inco. And it's been a really good lathe. Uh, it still turns straight. There's a little bit of slop in the cross slide you gotta watch out for. But it's not bad. We added the digital on. Oh, that was one of the things. With that one came with the Neol, Neol, uh, Neol, Neol uh, digital mounted on that lathe. Which actually, this cheap, uh, medium price, whatever, DRO, I've been more pleased with than the Neol. Neol. Uh, I thought I really would like the Neol. It's okay but I like this one here has been the most dependable ones we've used. Um, I don't know, the DR Pros, their EL, I think it was 300 series. Anyway, it uses a magnetic uh, flat tape on a housing and they've been real dependable and uh, I like them. All in all, they've actually just worked out real good for us. One thing though is they didn't offer at the time I got this as fine of a graduation on the cross slide scale. So the one for the other lathe is a little bit finer on the, uh, the X axis here. This one here rounds to two tenths and that one's, that one's a more accurate one. Got more, more uh, <laughs> divisions in it. Okay, so. Let's see, well, then we'll go into the back room. But this one here was a very interesting purchase. This was made in 2016. Um, it had 23 hours on it when we bought it. It came from the Pipeline Training Center. And I don't know exactly what they were doing. They had three saws, three vertical tilt frame saws there. And this one was at auction. I kind of looked at it from a distance and I said, well, mine's getting ratty, but this one setting out in the rain is probably ratty too. Uh, it was under two years old. I didn't even realize that till I went over, till after I bought it, actually. I didn't realize how new it was. I just knew that it uh, was probably tighter than my old Marvel 81 that was getting worn out. And we may go around and talk about the ones outside when it's more springtime. Um, used the Marvel 81 for a lot of years. Um, I've been sold on the, Mar the Marvel saws. Uh, I see that they're not pushing them as much now that they're mixed with armed with uh, bloom. Uh, they're pushing more of the drop, more standard saws. Uh, and th this is becoming kind of a stepchild of them, unfortunately. Um, but that happens, that happens, companies buy. So the story with buying this one though, I went to the auction. I thought my other saw's wearing out. I don't need one. I didn't even price these. I figured this saw was probably worth $30,000, you know, on the used market. I didn't know how new it was. I didn't know what it was. I went there hoping I could get it for 15,000 because that was about all I could afford that day. So I went there and some of the other shop owners came up and they said, uh, you're not gonna bid on my saw, are you? And I was like, mm, I didn't know it was your saw, but, and several of them got to chatting together with each other and it came up for auction. As it came up for auction, they had the feeder on a pallet 
and they had this saw setting separate. And the gal brought the flag up and put it on the feeder, but it was one item for both of them. And she's asking for bids, and I had to restrain myself for a while, and I actually waited until he came down to $1,000. And I bid $1,000 on it, and he's still trying to get any other bids. He can't get anybody interested in, because the whole audience thought they were buying just the feeder, including my friends that were there with the other shops that had talked about buying the saw. And I'm just sitting here, I, I almost, I felt guilty, and I started to say something, but I'm like, no, John, shut up, shut up. It's not your responsibility to wake up other bidders. Um, anyway, so I got it for $1,000. Then the, then the auctioneer has the gal bring it, the flag to the next saw, and the next saw uh, was after this one, and all of my friends were like, wait, 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 we missed this one. And he said, no, I think we just sold that. And I said, yes, we just sold that. I spoke up and I said, you know, I, and the auctioneer agreed with me, so I had this saw. And then I proceeded to buy the next two because everybody was annoyed and I, those were good deals too, which I sold those ones. Um, so basically I got this saw for free. I tried for a little while. We spent a lot of time putting it in. And we spent a lot of time putting it in because of the coolant pan that's underneath here. When they pulled it out of the training center, it had a chip pan and a coolant tub that was just a sheet metal one went underneath here. I could have bought the original chip pan for it without a drive for the motor, uh, for the chip uh, pan, it was automatic dumping. I could have got that for around $6,000. And I just didn't really see the value in that. I already had these heavy bars left over from another project that we made. And uh, I think I had the plate here too, a half inch plate. I think those were both leftovers. And if not, I bought the half inch plate. I don't know. Anyway, it was cheaper welding that all up and it gave a foundation to it that would go across our floor drain. So uh, that was an advantage over having, you can lift the saw, the feeder, everything up all at once with the crane with the shackles on the ends. So that made it rather nice for where it is here. But still, once I had it in, I was feeling like we didn't really need this much of a saw. I looked at the price of them then, and they were running 120 some thousand. Uh, the other day I looked at it, it's up to 157 for this model now. But uh, so we, we offered it for sale for a little while. And we thought, well, you know, it'd just be better to put the money into something else, maybe do a little work on the saw we kicked out. As we've used it more, though, we lost this saw. It, it's very nice. We have gotten familiar with it before anybody came up and decided to buy it for a reasonable price. No, no, our saw, nice saw. Um, we also built a little table, which we've, some of our videos, you can see uh, table. And I mentioned one time that we had, you know, there, that table would be, we had 10,000 worth of labor in it of work. Well, when I say something like 10,000 worth of, uh, in that table, that's what, I would have had to charge somebody to make it worthwhile. That's not, that doesn't mean that I paid a employee plus worn tools $10,000 out to make it. No, um, <clears throat> the piece of plate, uh, it is T1 plate. It, it was expensive, but uh, no, our cost was under 10,000. We try and do things to where we make a profit. But if I was gonna do that for a customer, that would be a $10,000 part. And if you're making a part like that, carefully machined with nice T-slots, removable insert. Um, you'd be silly if you didn't get 10 grand at least for that, you know? You gotta make some money. That's, that's the name of the game. Somewhere you got to make some money. Uh, it's nice to have fun. Uh, I would like to be retired to where I was just making fun uh, things all the time, but not really. Not ever gonna really, not retire, retire. Um, I have slowed down though. I have slowed down. It used to be when I first started, when I was building this shop, when I was gathering stuff up before I even bought this property, I literally would work um, on a slow day, I'd work 12 hours, but 16 and 20 hour days were actually normal for me until I got to be about 50. And then I slowed down and now I really don't wanna work over eight hours a day. And that's part of having employees. So they make up some of the stuff that I'm not pushing myself to try and get done. 
And we have a nicer time doing it, I think. So um, good saw. How much has it helped in a lot of different jobs? As far as direct dollars, it versus not having it, um, you just couldn't do the job. But the portion of it it does, is, it's needed but small. Ah, there's been some times I've directly charged for doing sawing, though, too. A couple of those. I'd still say it's only about 30000 uh, as far as actual chargeable time to it. But you've got to have one. They're, they're critical. You've got to have one. 